it's not about perfection, it's about connection. We're all here for connection. We're all here to know that we're not alone because it is social media. I cannot overestimate the importance of really showing up and putting out your voice in support of other people. And it really is about showing up over showing off. This is Brand Story, a podcast featuring in-depth conversations with leaders, marketers, and brand storytellers about their professional journey and the impact they're making on the world around them. Welcome to the Brand Story Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Gilman, and my guest today is Tara Horsmeyer. Tara is the owner of Happy Words, a consultancy where she works as an executive LinkedIn trainer and advisor. Tara helps companies, teams, and leaders build their LinkedIn presence and increase opportunities by offering workshops, consulting, coaching, and content. Tara was an editor, spent many years as an SDR in sales, and then combined her talents to do what she does today, being a prolific content creator and a leader on LinkedIn, helping other others express themselves. Hi, Tara. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm really happy to have you here. Um, Tara and I have worked together a little bit, and uh, at the very early days of the podcast, Tara helped us with some writing on the landing pages and was part of the process. So. It's so amazing to to now bring you on as a guest. It's really fun. Yeah, it feels full circle. Which yeah, is, doesn't it? I mean, I told you, I was so giddy about this that I'm like, it's just funny how that happens and things just, you know, I, great people find each other and figure out ways to work together. So I love that we're doing it again. And uh, yeah, I was so excited to have you on because you've been a big influence for me on LinkedIn um, and taught me an awful lot, you know, some of it directly by you and I, I talking, but some by just watching you and watching how freely you give advice to everyone that follows you and how encouraging and fun and positive you are in all your content. So, uh, you know, right at the outside of this, I'll tell the audience, if you don't follow Tara on LinkedIn, you need to go do it immediately because her content is second to none and it will always put you in a better mood for the day. Well, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, that it's true. A better mood for today. Just follow Steve too. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a blast following you and you add so much value. So you've changed industries and roles and still continued growing and changing. You know, and I remember reading something about you talking about that it's just never too late. And I think a lot of people sometimes think they can't make a change. Well, I, I think, you know, at one point in my life, I would have agreed. I would have thought, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. This is a lot of us that we we lean into those shoulds that we grew up with. You know, it's like, hey, I, I'm supposed to go to school, and then I'm supposed to go to college, and I'm supposed to get a job, and I'm supposed to follow this very linear path that I've set out for myself. And for so many of us, what we do is we jump into that, and then we don't think, oh my gosh, seasons of life are going to change. I'm going to change with them, my circumstances, my passion my beliefs, what I thought I loved at 18, 28, 38, all of that is going to change too. But when I really decided, you know what, I'm going to lean into the seasons of my life and allow work to be a residual part of that, to be a part of it, but not to be the actual thing that I was climbing and going, but instead allowing it to have a more organic feel to it. That's when I realized, you know what, I am never too late, no matter what I'm doing or what I'm meant to be. I really am right on time for right now because I've never been a 42-year-old me. I've never had the season of life that I'm in. So why get so rigid? and thinking, oh my gosh, I missed it because I didn't do it when I was supposed to or when everybody else told me I should have when I was, you know, 25. That's such great advice and words to live by. So what would you call this season of your life right now? Oh gosh, um, this season, I, I think to put it in actual seasons, I feel like we're a little bit in like, a new spring again for me, you know, because I, I feel like I kind of came out of a winter. We all kind of came out of the last couple of years of 2020 of pandemic of just so much unknown and, and feeling very much in hibernation. And I went through a lot of that. I feel like I kind of changed and leaned into what I needed to do then and was very almost private in a lot of ways, even though I was public on LinkedIn internally. Um, I, I took a lot of things in and I went through a little bit of a metamorphosis to now feeling again and I know we started talking about this about a year and a half ago, but really feeling like this last fall and to now is finally, I'm like, okay, this is who I'm supposed to be in this season. And this is what I'm going after because I feel like maybe I'm a little new version of me. Maybe I'm a little spring chick in some ways, but I'm bringing in all the last 20 years of that. So it's it's a really fun, refreshing, and I'm excited to get out and to to feel more like, okay, it's spring, it's open, life is open again, and, and let's run after what's next. 
Good for you. And good for you for reinventing yourself and, you know, using the parts of yourself, all the experiences you had before you seem to incorporate into what you do now. And you do it in such a positive, passionate, fun way that I think it's really contagious. I think you have that effect on other people. And, you know, I had a guest recently, Dory Clark, who's an author and wrote Reinventing You. And it was interesting when I was doing the, when I was doing the research and reading that book, I thought a lot about you because you and I talked a lot about reinvention and what everyone was going through in the pandemic. And you can't, you really got involved in LinkedIn in 2019, but it kind of changed for you in 2020, didn't it? It did. So I tell everybody that I was like the ultimate poster child of the lurker, you know, of that kind of, and everybody talks so bad about it, but I'm like, that was me. I spent all of 2019 and half of 2020 100% on the outside looking in. You know, I, I came to it for a different reason. I just came to learn. And then I figured out, oh my gosh, there are all these brilliant people sharing insights. It, it's my mastermind in my pocket. It's free, you know, except it cost me some time to come in and dig in. But I just want to sit and learn. And so all that I did really for that first almost year was just connect with great people who I would see put out great content. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to DM them. That's probably the SDR me. I'm no problem. Just like sending a message or saying, but it was never, hey, what's in it for me? I'm just like, gosh, it, 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 creating content is such a thankless job. You know, you never really know how it lands. So anytime I would learn something, I started just DMing the person and saying, hey, thanks for, you know, putting this in. I actually did this when I, in my work or in my job, I implemented this tip or trick and it worked, you know, and thank you. And because I was genuinely grateful because I'm sitting here like, my gosh, this is a mastermind every single day. If you follow the right people, start listening to the right advice, but then start implementing it in your world. So I'm very much into the take, you know, the thought and put it into action as quickly as I can. And, uh, and, but what I was doing, which, you know, was never like, I'm going to go out and build all these relationships, but how can you not by having those conversations? So I started there privately and then started moving to comments and commenting on people's, you know, conversations and having conversations there. And so by the time I actually started posting, I felt like I had all these friends on the platform. So it just felt natural to say, okay, well now I'm going to put out my thoughts and maybe that can help me six months ago or, or whoever, you know, needs some help or encouragement today with no expectation of like, I'm going to become this person or do this. It was just, it was a natural progression for me. Yeah. And I think what's really cool about the way you went about that and the way you go about your content today is you never sell. And I know you have a sales background, you know, and lots of people do. Lots of people have been in sales in one way or the other, or they're entrepreneurs. And you and I talked about that a great deal. And, you know, I have a podcast, but we have no agenda. We're, we, we aren't actually trying to jam in our unique selling proposition right below the surface of every episode. I just want to tell people stories. And I feel like you do that with your content so well. And a lot of people are hesitant to DM someone or leave a comment or interact. So what would you say to those people? I wrote about it a little bit, and I I think I've kind of stumbled on what it matters to me is that it's, I, I, talk, I call that kind of say, uh, see something, say something. And I have been like, that's kind of my personality, but there's always a switch. Like there's that moment where we see something and we think something always, you know, we always see something and think something. And where I really started turning was like, it takes me just as much time, maybe five seconds more to think it and just to turn it into something fast, you know, and just turn it into an encouragement an acknowledgement, you know, start dropping a like something, but start using that voice. And really the key isn't, oh my gosh, I need to have something perfect to say. It's literally just instead of thinking something, just write it, just do that real quick, force yourself to. And, and then it becomes habit to where you almost can't stop yourself because now you see something great. And instead of just letting that thought marinate, think about it, and then kind of move on with your day. What if I just took a second to make that thought actually like tangible and encourage and potentially start a conversation and relationship. You don't think about that in the moment, but that's actually what you're doing is you're saying something, but you're also saying, I see you, I see someone. Yeah. And I also think it's just an act of generosity and an authentic act of generosity. You know, you're not trying to get anything. You're just supporting others and cheering them on. And I think people have a misperception about LinkedIn. You know, at first everyone thought, oh, it's, you just put your resume there and you try to get a job there, but it's a really rich social platform where people, you know, you and I've talked about this, Callie Schweitzer, the, the, you know, lead of the creative pro creators program on LinkedIn calls it the platform of generosity. 
And when I hear that, I think about people like you and the Steve Watts and the, and the JP Fishers of the world where you guys are out there, you know, cheering each other and cheering other people on, not trying to get anything. You're just doing it. So how do you, how do you stay motivated to do that? And what would you ta tell others about that? I mean, 99% of what people I talk with is, well, what if it's crickets, you know? And then now everybody sees that I did something and nobody's responding or stuff like that. And so that's why I'm always like, well, start slowly and start doing that. But then if you want engagement and that's what you want, of course, think that's what everybody who's putting it out there. So put yourself in someone else's shoes and remember that we're all on the same team. We're all here to encourage and help each other. Even if you do the same thing as someone else or offers it, you're coming at it from such a unique point of view. And that's the other thing. Oh, I don't have anything interesting to say or that person already left that comment and that's what I was thinking. And I'm like, yeah, but they don't have your name. They don't have your story. Like just, just start doing it. And remember that's what you really want too is we're all here for connection. We're all here to know that we're not alone, really. That we're not just like out in the wilderness, you know, kind of calling to the wild that we're in this to, you know, together because it is social media. It's not, you know, a blog or something that's be meant to be more consumed one way. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, you know, you do a lot of teaching and a lot of education around what we're talking about right now. You really encourage, I think you've encouraged way more people than you would ever imagine. You know, because the power of, you know, how you used to be a lurker, you know, I, I'm, I used to be a lurker occasionally, I lurk now, yeah, you know, where you just, you're tired, you don't feel like making a comment, but those words that people are putting out there and the advice and the, the education and teaching they're putting out there for free has an effect. And so, you know, a lot of times when you don't get those comments or those likes or the things you really want, you are still being listened to by a whole lot of people who just for whether they're busy or they couldn't find the time, didn't yeah. comment. And they see you, you know, that's what we always say. That's the the gap between the impressions that you see, or the, you know, the, the views on your post or wherever it is that, uh, and between people who have, it's such a small percentage of the impact that you're making and such a small percentage of what you could, of who you're actually reaching in those moments. Even when quote, you know, impressions are down or reaches down, it still is wild when we really think about it that, I just said something and so many people stopped to take notice, you know, and, and whatever their day looked like, maybe they were in the middle of, you know, something and they couldn't engage. They still saw it and they still saw your name and they still, you know, were able to, you were still able to have your message out there. So make sure it's a good one, a positive one. That's so cool. I love that. And you help people, you know, it was part of your work. You work with leaders and, and executives to go ahead and stop being afraid and jump on and start you know, having a voice. Why do you think it is like sometimes executives are just paralyzed of, you know, they want, they, they want to make sure everything they say is right. Yeah. I think you've nailed it that they really get stuck in this perfection zone of, you know, I've got a team or I've got other people really crafting my message internally, or I've spent years crafting my vision or like things don't just come out overnight, you know, for a lot of them. And so part of it is, and that's why I always start with mindset on this is just understanding that I always say the battle's not out there. Trust me, the battle's in here. It really is between your ears, you know, that's where it starts. But also when you start to look at it, it's not about perfection. It's about connection. It's just about one simple thing, one simple time. You have to break these huge ideas because a lot of times they didn't get to where they are because they're small thinkers. They're big thinkers and they've got, you know, great vision and all of that. And it can be hard to take those off and to start breaking them down into digestible bites. And so that's why it really helps having someone, even it, whether that's internal, external, a friend, not to just start bouncing those ideas off of and just start to get their words out there knowing that it's all about connection and it's not about perfection or press release or anything like that. It's just about having a conversation and starting it from a point of view and a place that they already have. And so once they start working with someone and saying like, oh gosh, I've almost been overthinking this, um, it becomes a lot easier for me and for them. <laughs> I bet it does. And I think it's, you know, it's interesting that professionals and, you know, it's, you know, uh, it's a professional platform, but it gets very personal. It depends on the person that's using it. And, you know, but people are afraid to have that human moment to put themselves out there. So, you know, if, if you're one of the people listening, that's like, oh, I just, I'm so hesitant to say this or talk about myself or talk about my life or talk about my work in a personal way, just follow Tara and you'll get some really great advice and see how 
effortless. You you make it look effortless. I know it's not, but you do. You know, I know you work very hard on all of your posts, but they just have a, a feeling, you know, and it is very positive. And I think that's a great example for people to see. So what do you do when people are just really blocked, you know, and they're having a hard time? Because I think we all struggle. What's the advice you give? You know, someone might be posting and then they just can't think of anything. What do you tell people? I mean, we all go through it, you know. So I, I worked with someone pretty recently and we started breaking down. She was going through some severe writer's block. And for me, writer's block is almost always emotional. It's not logical. Like we think of, we have thousands of thoughts every day. We can think of something to say. The problem is, is that we're typically starting with what's in our head rather than what is really moving our heart. What, and it sounds so cheesy, but it really is like, okay, take my brain out of this for a second. What's moving me today or in this season of life or in this moment in my career? Career or in this, you know, meeting I just had, like, what are the things that you can go back and look at and say, okay, that was a passion point and start writing from there. Even if it's not what you're going to post a lot of times getting over that hurdle of writer's block, it is an emotional hurdle. It's you're trying to connect the dots really logically instead of allowing them and externally, instead of allowing them to connect with you inside internally, because you're not connecting with what you're writing. And I go through same thing where I'm like, write something or think, and I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> or if I do got it, it sucks. Like this is not me. And it's typically because I'm trying too hard. I'm trying to overthink it and I'm not connecting with the message I'm actually trying to do. So a big thing that I always say also is land the plane. Like I'm trying to think too broad, too high. What is actually something that I want to say? Like a one line, one sentence. And then once you have that, all of a sudden, I mean, nine times out of 10, the meaning behind it, it, it will just start to explode and come as you start writing it. But really just start by connecting internally and then trying to land the plane and connect those dots of what the heck is it that I'm passionate about that I'm actually trying to say. And then once you have that, it's like, oh, okay, now how do I say it? Where do I get there? All of that, it comes so much easier than really trying to force, you know, trying to force a message that just isn't connecting. Yeah. And I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way to write. Like, you know, a lot of people are trained in school to write the essay and to write the thing. And, you know, you have a really cool rhythm in the way you write. It's almost like in stanzas. I love how you write. Um, and other people do it differently. And some people make videos. People do all kinds of different things. But one of the things you said that I think I just want to call out that I think is so important that you talk about and encourage people to do is to speak from the heart, not the head. You know, and I think people are afraid to do that because it shows who they are. But if you're a business person, you have a why. You you started your business or you're the CEO of something or you're a leader or you're an expert for a reason. So I think people people are always fascinated by other people and their stories. Absolutely. So why not celebrate your own, right? Yes. And that's what, again, like that's what connects us, you know, and, and I talk a lot of it, a lot about this with just my consulting and coaching clients about understanding that there's all different kinds of content out there. And specifically we work with buckets that I love because, because this is my sales part of me is we talk about no like, and trust, you know, that you're going to have different content that helps people know you. You're going to have different content that speaks to people liking what you stand for and liking what you believe and ultimately saying, okay, I, I am for this person or I'm not, you know, that's that magnetic drawing in or repelling kind of content that we see. And then we've got the trust content that it's like, okay, I trust that I know they're an expert in and I know what they can do and how they can help. And where the people who really excel in that trust bucket, they have a harder time coming to the no bucket because it's like, okay, well, I want you to, to trust what I do for you. But I'm like, well, the problem is we're all humans. <laughs> and so in order to really trust, you know, I, I can think that you're great at what you do, but to really move to like say, hey, I want to work with that person or I actually want to have a relationship even in the work arena or career arena, whatever that is. I also want to feel like I know something about them and I know what they stand for. And people just aren't, a, we're not a walking website anymore. We're not, we, we don't just see it as one side. We really want to get a full picture of who people are. It doesn't have to be by having such, you know, extreme strategies, but it really can be by just showing more personal side of you. That doesn't mean dear diary, you know, it's just a softer human side so that you can really say like, Hey, this is how we connect, you know, human to human, person to person. I'm an individual too. And, and this is why you can also trust me. I love know, like, and trust. That's really cool. And I think, you know, I work in brand and brands are an awful lot like people sometimes. 
and uh, at least the way we have relationships with them. And, you know, when you're going to buy from a brand or you're going to buy from anybody or you're going to hire a consultant or a, someone to help you learn a new skill, um, people make these decisions emotionally. They don't make them logically. So no like and trust has a huge impact. You know, we're going to, I'm going to choose to work with a person that, yeah, I might have three people that I, I trust their expertise, probably going to pick a person that I trust their expertise and like them. Yeah. It's how we are. And you it know, is. people like, want to give that a hard time, but I'm like, come on, think about the best people you have worked with in, in your life and in your career. You probably, you definitely trusted them. That's going to be a huge part of it, but you probably liked them too, you know, and, and on some level, like you may not be, okay, I want to be exactly like them in every level, but on some level you liked them and, and trusting them is a huge part of it, but also sharing stories, sharing vulnerable, feeling like, me too, that we could connect on some level is going to play a huge part of it. So same thing, business decisions of any kind, especially in social media where we don't get is we don't get the 3D, we get the 2D. You know, it, it matters almost even more because you can't just smile, you know, and we have to use our words in order to really move someone into like a feeling of connection and, and being able to do that well and do it at scale leads to those business relationships that we love and we already love. Yeah, th I, that's great. And I, you know, it's there's been a real shift and uh, it's a, been a big change where I think not that long ago, but there's sort of an old school point of view of like when you're in, at work, you should be a work person. You're a business person, you know, which has an image of not showing your emotions, not being human. Yeah, that has affected management. It's affected how companies are run. It's affected how people show up at work. And I think now, and especially after the pandemic, it's accelerated a little bit more, that we're starting to appreciate that we are all humans all the time at work, at home, you know, and the more we can be the more complete version of us, whether it's on social media or anywhere else, yeah, might, maybe everyone won't connect with you, but maybe the people you really want to work with will. Yes. And it works both ways. The people that, you know, want to work with you. And that's why I always talk about it as a magnet. Yeah. Like, don't be a when people unfollow you or don't like what you put out or are afraid of that, you know, and, and I say that to me because I'm a people person. If somebody, you know, randomly, somebody will post like somebody sent me a DM that they were unfollowing me. And I'm just like, that, that cracks me up. But also like if somebody did that, I'm like, oh, that would hurt. <laughs> like we're all human. But at the same time, it's natural and it happens to me and it happens to everybody. But actually what that means is you are doing your job. You are doing it well. You're standing for something, but really what magnets do is they attract, of course, but they repel and they sift out the people that you're like, you know what? I can't help you anyway. Our core values probably don't align. We probably would not like each other. <laughs> All of these other things that make work actually worth it when we're in, in the grind, in the mix, you're doing that ahead of time and you're able to do that with content even better because you don't have to sit through a lengthy conversation to get there. You can just kind of figure out like, hmm, these are not my people, not because they don't have a differing point of view or any of that, but just there's something within you and a, and a core value alignment or whatever that is that you're able to showcase of like, we probably wouldn't work well together. And that's okay because there are millions of other people who can. And people self-qualify, you know, and they, and you're better off working with people you fit with or have an affinity to or are going to listen to. Because a lot of times if you're a person that's a consultant or you're helping a business grow or whatever you're doing, whatever line of work you're in, you are um, showing up and changing, being an agent of change or you're listening. And if you don't have trust and you don't have some sort of affinity, it doesn't go as well. You know, I think we've all had client relationships where the person just wanted to argue all the time. They're not very productive in the end result, you know. And it's usually just because it was a bad fit. Exactly. <laughs> so you wrote a post that I just love and I saved it that about five ways to show up on LinkedIn, you know, and I think, you know, I'm talking to you almost completely about LinkedIn today, but anyone listening, you can take any of this advice to any platform, you know, and any of Tara's advice you see in her post online, you can not only take to any social platform, but if you just forget you're on a social platform and listen, you can just take it into your life because it's great advice, period. So I'm a fan. You can tell. 
Thank you. Yeah. Well, I always say it's about, you know, especially on LinkedIn, it really is about showing up over showing off. And that's where when people can really get to that other side of it, it's so much better because we stress out. Honestly, most of us, when we feel like I'm just promoting myself and I'm just putting myself out there constantly, like that really stresses us out. And that's why people always say like, I have a hard time promoting myself because it's not going to be our natural inclination. What is our natural is really showing up, showing showing up in ways that matter, showing up for other people, showing up to help, showing up to give. And then as we always talk about, and it's not like I'm only giving to get because those are the worst kind. I'm like, no, 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 that's not the point. But truly, because that is how we are wired in so many ways. And to get enjoyment out of life is when we're doing it together. And when we're not trying to show off, we're not trying to one up. That doesn't mean don't, you know, give yourself a pat on the back or celebrate because when you become someone who really other people are rooting for because you're rooting for them, they will show up for you in incredible ways when you do have those moments of celebration, when you do land a new role or, you know, have a new opportunity or a new project. It doesn't feel self-promoting. It feels like we are all in this as a community because you've shown up for them. So now they're going to show up for you versus I'm just coming here to show off and to be, you know, sit on my high horse. And I always say, well, don't do that. Just kick it in the streets. You're going to find your people. So true. Yeah. So some of the things that, that you called out in one of, uh, I have a lot of your posts that are my favorites, but you know, you, you called out a few things for people to think about when they show up on LinkedIn or any platform really. And one was to be real and another was to be relatable, you know, and be relational. So do you want to talk about any of those? When you really are who you are online and people meet you offline. And I don't want anybody to ever say, oh, she's exactly who she is online. What I really want people to say is she's even a more vibrant 3D you know, version of herself who I see online. And that's what I want is if somebody covered my name and picture and read it or got read my comments or anything that they can go away saying, okay, I feel like I know her. And then when they see me offline or we get to hang out, they're like, okay, yeah, this is you. Like this really is you. And because of that, I can move from thought to action so much faster because I'm not trying to edit myself. I'm just trying to be who I am and understand it's a public place, you know, but take that. So really being real, but then that does the other things, which it makes you relatable. And it also makes you really relational because you're starting to look at it, not as what, who I am. And I've got to show up as this inauthentic version of me. I can really just be who I am. If we were texting, you know, it worked text slacking or talk, having a conversation outside of here. We can have it on here too. Yeah. And I think that's a, a real trick and something to aspire to for anyone on social media and for brands, because, you know, being authentic is something that is so key to having people value you. And it goes back to what we talked about, about you, you really can't pretend and try to be all things to all people. Everyone's not going to, you know, buy your brand or or be into what you do. That's why people make different choices. So, you know, being, being relatable and, and being relational, I think is so important. And then there's one that I wanted to call out because I think it's so important. People forget, um, you know, people go on social media and they, they think, okay, I'm here to express myself and they forget to be responsive. They forget to <laughs> like talk, you know, to stop talking about themselves and respond to others and help others shine. So that's that's made a huge difference for me. I spend, I'd say I spend more like 70% of my time online uh, on LinkedIn, commenting on other people's posts and engaging with them. So what, what would you tell people about that? Oh gosh. So I, it's so funny and you'll hear it here first, but I actually, um, I, I sat on an interview uh, with Fast Company a few weeks ago and this is, and it's funny cause they actually found me from a comment <laughs> that I made. And literally that's what we were talking about. When you show up responsively as in you're coming again to, to talk and to join conversations that other people are. So to your point, I cannot, un I cannot overestimate the importance of really showing up and putting out your voice in support of other people and being responsive. So if you do decide to go ahead and make a post, respond to those comments, you know, and a lot of people who have hundreds of comments are like, I can't get to it. I'm like, I get it, but at least respond to some of them, you know, or most of them try like, and nobody's gonna, you know, tell you anything wrong when you're trying, when you're actually coming to say, okay, this isn't just me out here in a one-way street and giving you, you know, tips and then 
piecing out. It's no, I'm coming to actually build relationships here and to be responsive and to respond to something that you see and join the conversation because it, it's it's authentic to what you're feeling, seeing, and actually walking through in the moment. So I, I literally cannot talk enough about the importance of spending time commenting. And like I said, that's how I started. That's how I found my voice. That's how it just felt so much more relaxed. And it's honestly where I still spend most of my time is yes, crafting a post and making sure that I'm doing that. But if I did nothing else, like what if you just walked in a conversation and somebody said something or you said something and then left? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so weird, yeah. you know? Like, it's you not very friendly. Do that in real life, like, not that you have to do that to every single post, you know, that you see or whatever, but do the best you can to start joining in the conversations and being responsive to the people who have joined into your conversations. Yeah, that's see something, say something. And then also when someone bothers to comment on you, you know, those conversations, it's fascinating because, you know, that's how I started too, you know, because I, years ago thought, oh, LinkedIn's where you put your resume, whatever. And, you know, LinkedIn evolved and it's, I think, the best social media platform now. I love it. I have made some incredibly valuable relationships here. Like people who I've ended up working with, people who I've just helped because they needed it and they needed some advice or help at a moment. And then most of my guests, not all, but most, I have met on LinkedIn for this podcast. And, I, you know, there's sort of the sales thing that people do that, you know, they, they sort of like, you know, connect with you and then immediately try to sell you. It's so obnoxious. And, you know, very early on when I was, you know, getting guests and doing this, I would never ask anyone to be on the podcast if I hadn't interacted with them for months because I really wanted a sense of who they were and what they cared about so that I could do a good job of helping them tell their story. So the relationships are just priceless. Yeah. And is it worth, you know, essentially ruining something that could be great from just sending a, hey, I need this off the bat or I want this from you? Because that's really what you're saying. Anytime you send that, it's, can you give me something? I want to take something from you instead of spending the time to where now if somebody connects with me and it, and, you know, and then I know what they're doing. We all do. I'm like, I were, I literally worked in sales development. So I have trained people on how to do this. Uh, and I, it does not bother me. I'm like, I feel like, it, you know, LinkedIn is that beautiful intersection of relationships and revenue and opportunity. And it should be this way. It should be great opportunities and, and great revenue potential, you know, relationships relationships that come from it. If they're meant to, but if you kill that immediately, like it just, it feels icky for everybody involved. But if you've interacted with me and engaged with me and, and send me, Hey, can you, you know, drop a comment or do you need, I'm like, Heck yes, of course. Cause you've already given me so much. Like why wouldn't I almost feel like I'm in your debt, you know, <laughs> like, of course I want to help or connect with you or be on anything. I, I think it's amazing because it's, you know, it feels very golden rule. You know, and people ignore it. And I think Steve Watt put it as pitch slapping, you know, where you just show up and you're like, here's my pitch. It's so obnoxious. And I've actually, you know, I get them all the time still. And what I, what I do occasionally where I just try to explain to the person why that won't work, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, if you showed up and started commenting and then asked me if I was interested in what you're doing, I would probably then have the conversation. But if you just connect with me and immediately send me a sales pitch, you're done. You know, it's crazy. It doesn't work. It doesn't it just, work. And, you know, it doesn't work. That's why I'm like, plain and simple, guy. It don't work. And again, this is somebody who was, you know, an SDR leader. Like, this is what we do. But the great thing is that for as many people where they're not doing it, I just see like you, I see a whole new generation of people who really get it, you know, and, and who are making waves and making incredible connections. And, you know, my father was a pediatrician and he, you know, this was in the eighties and nineties and early two thousands, really before online and networking uh, digitally was, was a thing, was even invented. And guess how he did it by building relationships, by giving more than he could ever get. And naturally when somebody had had a baby, they would be like, my gosh, go see Dr. Tommy because he's great at what he does. But like, we love him. He's a great person and he's really here for me. And so I saw firsthand how he built his entire practice 
word of mouth, you know, and, and just by building great relationships and that lasts for the long haul. And that's the cool thing, because even if someone can't buy your product or service, they know someone who can potentially. And so it's like, gosh, when you do this whole thing as an ecosystem, things will come to you when you just do it, like in a way that gives other people what they need, you'll ultimately get what you need to. So it all works out. And you know, you have to be patient. It's not an instant gratification universe period and people are so impatient about results like they get on linkedin and they think oh well i wanted my 10 sales or whatever the heck they're doing and then they're you know impatient about relationship which makes no sense you know it's it's a way of operating and you know i i've been really surprised because people who i've connected with a couple of years ago have then all of a sudden showed up and said hey you know i think i might have this opportunity or someone you can help or something like that. And it's really amazing that how consistency over time, I don't know why it's amazing. It seems very simple, but just being a nice person over time does kind of pay off, doesn't it? Go figure. We're all human. We Go like figure. people who we like. <laughs> Let me ask you just a few more questions. What's one key piece of advice that you were given that you know, really stuck with you? I do think it is, shockingly, it goes back to building relationships. I cannot say this enough, build relationships. And that it wasn't even something that was handed to me, but it really was what I saw growing up is that good things come to people who build relationships, genuine relationships over the long haul. And that is work relationships, life relationships. And also you don't need a ton but you really, when you work to actually do the work, to get to know people, to understand them, to do what helps them move forward, that it is that whole reciprocity thing that I feel good in the moment, but also I know it's going to build something over time that feels great in that season, whatever that season is. So always work to, to expand your network or whatever you want to call it. But at the heart of all of that is building relationships and don't just build them for right now, build them for the long haul. That's incredible advice. So what was the highlight for you? You've had a lot of change in this last year and you keep pushing the envelope with your content. I know you have a new ebook out, you have partnerships going on. So what was the highlight of this past year for you? Gosh, so I think it really was the epiphany of getting back to my roots and uh, being able to lead and train a few teams and work and lead workshops. I used to do training and development as part of previous roles, and, and I just, I love it. I love, love, love. I love doing the work and writing, but I really love helping and encouraging other people to do the work and to, to get in there and dive in. And so being able to take everything that I've done and know and have walked firsthand through um, and package all of that up and write workbooks and and really sit with a team, uh, you know, a company as well and help them implement these LinkedIn strategies themselves and then seeing them start to work on that themselves. I think that was really the highlight that I didn't see coming a year ago, but I've loved it. Yeah, good for you. I mean, I think that's a natural evolution to what you do and a really cool way to deliver it, you know? So it's great. It's always great to see friends grow and prosper and do new things. And I think you've been just like crushing it. So what's next for you? What pro Do you have any exciting project coming up or anything you want to let people know about? Yeah. So this really is what's next. And, and this has been a big evolution. So before this, I've really been behind the scenes and that's I, still where I'm comfortable. I still love helping other people shine. That's going to be my goal always. Uh, but instead of being the ghostwriter that really does all the work is I'm really helping to encourage teams and leaders to take on the work themselves because that's really where they grow, you know? And, and so, but being a guide and being a coach and being an encourager, so leading workshops, leading trainings, hopefully doing more of those in person. That's what I'm really excited about is being able to go to people. I'm here in Atlanta, but uh, able to go, you know, as much as I can, hopefully in the coming year, but also virtually, but just being back, I think with people, that's really where I shine in a larger setting. And that's where I feel like I can make the biggest impact because that really is my ultimate goal is to make sure that I don't just do for me one for one, but when I can do one for many and help as many people and encourage and coach one-on-one -on -one and all of that, I think that's going to be a, that's the exciting what's next. Yeah. Well, you have a gift for it. You're a natural educator. And I think you're a great speaker. And I think anyone that engages with you to come help, you know, their team learn or their organization learn is going to be really happy they did it. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So one last question for you, and then I'll let you go back to your busy schedule. Um, if you could give your younger self any advice right now, 
with all the perspective you've gained, what would it be? This probably goes against a lot of advice that I think we were given, especially in the work world. I actually say go with your gut. So lean into your gut. And this isn't going to be for everybody, but this specifically for me. Anytime I honestly have felt in my core, because I am very interested in being connected with my full self, that a decision was right. And typically data is going to involve in that feeling, of course. But every single big decision I've made, I've actually made more with my gut, with my emotions, with my feelings on that decision. And it has turned out every single time. When I've gone against that is really where I have gotten in trouble growing up. And I've always, you know, you always hear that, but it's like, oh, I knew better. And really what you're saying is my gut, my, my feelings, I knew better. Like I knew in a deep place in my core that this either was or was not the right move. And that when I listen to that guidepost, it's, it's always a good thing. So I would just tell my younger self, you know what, go with your gut and be okay with it. Don't try to think your way out of everything. It's okay if you know something is right or know something is not right for you to lean into those seasons of life and just to go with your gut, um, you know, probably a little sooner than I did most of the time. Well, that's excellent advice for any season of any of our lives. And I, I, I feel the same way. The, the decisions I made that were all logical and I ignored the feeling I had always ended up as terrible decisions. So, you know, listening to our own intuition, I think, is really powerful. So thank you so much for being here today. This was a blast. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're the best. <laughs> this was great. I had, a, I had a really great time talking with you, and uh, I hope all the listeners enjoy it. We will put a link to your LinkedIn, of course, and to Happy Words, your company. And uh, everyone, please follow Tara. You will thank yourself for doing it. Her content's amazing. And as you can tell from listening to her today, she's a very fun, very positive person. Well, thank you for having me. Want to hear more inspiring stories? Subscribe on your preferred podcast app so you don't miss an episode. And if you like what we're doing, please rate, review, and share. It's the best way to support us. Thank you for listening to Brand Story. Thank you.